I'm Brian Lenskis from the Low Carb MD podcast, and now I have an old friend, Evelyn Boudoir Roy, tongue twister. <laughs> I'll get one of these years. We'll just keep working on it every time. But, but it's so good to see you. How's everything at Low Carb Denver? How have you been doing here? Uh, well, it was a tough decision eh, to make it or not, because this is my favorite event of the year. I, I, I love Low Carb Denver. I've been coming since 2017, and I look forward to this day, like to this event the whole year. Um, but with everything that is going on with the coronavirus and, and everything, uh, it was a tough call. So when I left, everything was OK. You could travel to uh, the US. And when I landed, I learned that I was quarantined for 14 days upon my return and all that. So. Still, I'm, I'm quite glad to be here. Yeah, this is a unique situation for all of us. It was a tough decision for all of us. We had to weigh the, the benefits of coming. And, and it's great because we, we, we've had an opportunity to talk to a lot of people and, and talk behind the scenes and, and um, learn more. Uh, and then all, obviously being very careful and washing our hands and, and staying away from, from uh, sick people. That, and not touch each other. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Social distancing. Yeah. So it's an awkward situation yeah. for a lot of us, but it's been a lot of fun. And, and so I've learned a lot here also. But tell people who don't know you what you you're doing? How, what kind of medicine you're practicing in Canada and, and uh, what the road's been like for you? Um, sure. I'm a um, family doctor uh, based uh, just south of Montreal and in the suburbs of Montreal in Canada. And um, I, uh, find out, I found out about um, low carb, ketogenic, intermittent fasting in, two, in May 2016. So it's going to be my fourth year anniversary pretty soon. Um, through Obesity Code from uh, Dr. Jason Fung which was absolutely mind-blowing and life-changing and career-changing for me. And so I went to train with him and Megan Ramos for, uh, for a little while and decided that I, I couldn't just keep on practicing my standard old medicine anymore. I, I really had to give my patients an opportunity at choosing this treatment if, if they felt like this was appropriate for them, because it's not appropriate for everyone and not everyone is ready to you know, make lifestyle sure. changes for sure. Um, so I created the Clinique Reversa, which is um, um, it, it's a multidisciplinary clinic. Uh, so um, we have doctors, we have nurses, we have medical assistants, we have kinesiologists, um, pharmacists, so a, a psych psychologist, therapist, and uh, admin assistant, and all that. And <clears throat> what we do is. Um, people who enroll, they actually need to pay money because obviously um, um, it, it, it would be hard on my family doctor's salary to pay for all those people, but um, people pay and, and then they enroll in our, our six-month program. And our, the goal of our program is to reverse their chronic disease related to uh, lifestyle. So mainly um, obesity, type 2 diabetes, uh, metabolic syndrome, but a lot, uh, surprisingly, uh, it surprised me when I first started, but a lot of chronic uh, fatigue and chronic pain in particular and that we're able to reverse. We also obviously accept any kind of patient who want to do prevention because I think prevention is key and doesn't get enough um, attention uh, nowadays in our healthcare system which we were discussing is more like a sick care system. Now doctors are more and more um, acting on diseases as opposed to working really hard to, to prevent them or to reverse them before they get too serious. So um, this is the medicine that I do, but um, and I'm also um, a diplomat of the uh, bomb, so I'm certified in obesity medicine. Um, so that I do. But um, actually, this medicine I only do it like one day, one Friday every two weeks, and the rest of the time I'm just a regular family doctor who practices regular um, family medicine. I say regular, but I shouldn't say regular because to every patient. I talk about nutrition. Yeah. To every patient, I talk about look at what's going on in your life, what you came for, what you complained about when you first came, or look at your blood work or whatever. This is related to your lifestyle. Do you want to hear about it? Do you want me to talk to Do you want, let's talk about nutrition. Let's talk about your sleep. Let's talk about your stress levels and all that. And of course, as you probably know, this doesn't make for the most um, 
like this doesn't pay very much because you spend a lot of time with one patient. Yeah, and, and that's the truth. A lot of people don't realize we spend a lot of time with that patient. Plus, when we prevent diabetes or other disease processes, we get paid less because physicians get paid the more we code. So we're, I always joke that I'm the dumbest doctor around because I'm trying to prevent. I, I'm like the mechanic who's trying to keep you from blowing up your engine. That's what we are doing. That's yeah. the type of medicine we're doing yeah. rather than being the best one at changing the engine. Yeah, right? yeah. Because you want someone who's going to prevent you that you could drive 400,000 miles on your car rather than change your engine every thousand miles because you don't change your oil, you know? That's how it is. So it's really exciting what you're doing. And I know you took heat doing this, and, and but the rewards outweigh what you've been through, you think? Absolutely. You're still smiling and having fun? I, um, he's referring to the fact that I've got four official complaints with the College of, um, of uh, Physicians of Quebec. Um, I had to get a lawyer, I had to defend my case. It was, it was really tough. Emotionally, mentally, it was really tough. And it was at a time where we were not so many doctors in Canada doing this. Jason Fung was, but uh, not so many other family doctors. And he's not a family doctor, but in, in Quebec, it felt pretty lonely. And, um, and my biggest fear at the time was that they would rule uh, that I could keep my license, but that I could, I would have to stop doing this medicine because this medicine is what makes sense to me and is what makes me happy. And and I, I think it doesn't matter what you do in life. If you make a ton of money and you're miserable doing it, yeah. it's not worth it. Yeah. And so, yeah, you lose money, but you, I like. Honestly, you're not the dumbest doctor around because we're a bunch of us being yeah. like dumb doctors around. Yeah, yeah, it's around. true. Yeah, it's true. But when we see our patients getting better, that's what we wanted the medicine for. You know, exactly. really, you, at the end of the day, getting people healthy, getting people their depression better, anxiety, stress, PTSD, we've seen it all. And so once you see it, you can't unsee it. And that's what we've all been victims of to some degree because we can't go back. Exactly. You know, once you see your patients getting better cl clinical experience, uh, that speaks, speaks volumes. You know? Exactly. Because I think when we look back at history, the experts, the, the so-called experts are, are gonna be judged harshly because under their watch, we have an uh, absolute epidemic of diabetes, obesity, depression, anxiety, violence, you know, all these things that we're seeing. And, and, Heart and, diseases yeah. and all that. Not, yeah. It's not getting any better, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So at some point we have to stand up and, you know, a, a doctor friend of mine made a, a good point because I complained that there's not enough doctors. And he said, no, there's too many sick people. Mm. So unless we start doing our job and helping people to stay healthy, we're always going to be overwhelmed by the system. Absolutely. You know, so I think it's so critical what you're doing. And it's always great to see you. I mean, it's, it's nice. And, and, you know, just having a voice of reason. reason and another, you're, you, we put you in the class of like Tim Noakes, right? And Gary Fetke, who went through a lot. Because you could have backed down and said, okay, I'm stopping and I'm not going to do it anymore. But you continue and you fought on. Yeah. And you really opened the door for a lot of other people who follow you. You know, sometimes just being that trailblazer, it takes a lot of heat. I was thinking about it with Semmelweis, when he, way back in the day, they thought he was nuts because he said, he said wash your hands and look what yep. he's doing now to save us, right? Absolutely. He died in, in, a, in an insane asylum because everyone said the guy was crazy having the gall to think that washing your hands would, would, would fix the problem. And now low carb is maybe the next step of what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So Evelyn, thank you so much for joining me and it's like awesome. Anything you want to tell people on the way out? Um, yes, I would like to um, just, uh, I don't know when this is going to air, but just a uh, quick note. If you're a, can a Canadian clinician, any type of clinician, and you like low carb or you want to learn more about it or you're pro low carb or whatever, or you offer it to your patients, um, please join the Canadian Clinician uh, for Therapeutic Nutrition. Um, you're going to find us online if you Google us. Uh, the more we are, the more we join together, the stronger we are, for sure. And um, I'd like to finish on the, um, on a note about diet doctor they just came out with a CME course that you can take yeah. if you want to become better at being a low carb practitioner um, it's important to educate yourself it's important to come to conferences like like these like low carb um, Denver you learn a ton of things but you mm -hmm. can learn a lot of stuff too online and on Twitter and on podcasts but it's great when you can get CME credits because and then you got, actually have something to show for and all doctors have to get a certain number of CME credits every year and stuff and and like what I was saying to Jeff last year is that 
uh, when I went through my complaints with the college, the, um, I think one of the things that really saved me and saved my license and my right to practice this medicine is the fact that I could show that I had a ton of CME credits on low carb, ketogenic, intermittent fasting. Yeah. And I got those credits from coming here to Low Carb Denver and other um, um, conferences, great conferences like this one. So it's important also to get your, uh, to get networking online so you don't feel alone and to get your CME credits and your education, super important. And they can hear your whole story on Low Carb MD. Absolutely, your podcast is yeah. great too for anyone who's looking for to learn, to get the gist of it, and to, to you know to get some tricks and stuff. Uh, awesome Low Carb MD podcast. I listen to it all the time. Yeah, and I think it's important to take it back to your doctors because yes. they can listen and let them make the decision. A lot of people won't take the time to listen, but the ones who do, uh, they're learning a lot. And at the conferences, we're seeing tons of docs, and that's why we're yep. doing these interviews too to let people know they're not the only one in the world doing it. Yes. You know, I think when there's safety and numbers and the more of us who are doing it and sharing our clinical experience the better off we do in the long run. Yeah, but it's not just doctors that eh? we see here. By raise of hand, yeah, we sure. saw lots of dietitians, Absolutely. nurses, pharmacists, all kinds of healthcare professionals are here, and also all kinds of just normal people who come here for education. So yeah, yeah definitely a great place to be, Low Carb Denver. All right, thank sure. you.